key situations, you want your best guys. So I think when you have a clear divide between the first group and the next group, you're going to have your best guys in there in a key situation. I mean, you're going to, you're going to look to continue to build that next group because anything can happen in this game and they may be in there in key situations, but at least initially until they get their feet wet, you're going to have your best, you're going to have your best guys in there. What about maybe, I shouldn't have said key. What about like 14 to nothing in the second quarter? I know it's a hypothetical. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know. Um, I would say no. You still you're, you're playing your you're playing your ones. Julie Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Jim, two years ago, you were recruiting Caleb Downs, and he ultimately picks another school, goes to Alabama. What were your emotions like this year when you sort of had a second chance, and, and he decides to come here, and, and all of the potential that he brings, and, and the impact he had? Was, it's probably going to be more common in this sport moving forward, but just to go through it for somebody of his caliber, what was that like? Well, you, you know, you, you take the emotions out of it. So when you say my emotions, you take the emotions out of it. It's, it's um, I just knew we had to be on point. I guess that's, you know, really it becomes, uh, you know, you look to recruit someone like that who understands the game the way he does. It's, it's like a job interview, you know, it's like, game day so it's not you know my job is to not be that rah rah guy and uh, all the beautiful things about ohio state you know my job is to explain the defense in detail so that he understands that i'm going to be able to coach him and make him better you know on the field and with the scheme so it's uh it's a lot more analytical a lot more analytical. Ben Rubinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Jim, uh, Ohio State's traditionally played a, a marquee non-conference opponent. Um, Notre Dame, obviously, the last couple of years. Um, you don't have that this year. And, and is there any kind of concern that you might not be challenged the way that you would need to be challenged uh, before you get in the meat of the schedule? I mean, how do you kind of feel about? I mean, I, you don't overlook any opponent. I get that, but. We also are realists. Um, how do you kind of approach it? You know, I, I I approach it the same. You're right. That is that's not something that falls under my uh, bailiwick. It's an Ivy League term. Uh, yeah, right. Bailiwick. I yeah. So like, yeah, can't be concerned with that. You know, we're looking at our play on the field and and. Um, I'll challenge them, you know. I make sure that I personally challenge them, no matter who the opponent is. Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Kind of following up on what Austin was asking, but applying it to linebacker a little bit. I think in the past years, you've talked and vocalized the need to put Cody Simon out there more when you had Steele, when you had Tommy, and maybe just run out of snaps at some point. But you were talking about with the safeties, maybe there is a clear divide between the starters and the backups. Is, does that still apply to Will with Sonny and CJ? And if not, what would you? Ideally, like to see what that split looks like between those two guys in that spot. Yeah, I, I no, it doesn't apply to CJ, right? So that's when you get into like, okay, we have uh, CJ, you know, who when I do think about things, I think about okay, is there a clear delineation one and two, but not with CJ. I mean, just like Cody was, I consider CJ um, a one. So, you know, you you could see you could see the combination there. You know, you could see Sonny playing Mike and CJ playing Will and Cody taking a rest, you know, or you could see CJ at Will and, and Sonny taking a rest. So I, I think all three of those guys are considered ones and should should play equally. And I'm not saying this happens on Saturday, but like, has he shown you he can handle that? Oh, yes. Goal? Oh, yes. Sonny's, Sonny is extremely coachable and He's one of those guys you can tell things to one time and he get and he and he gets it. 
So we have some versatility there. Tony Gerben, Buckeye Huddle. Uh, you mentioned recruiting Caleb is like game day. Were you an aggressive play caller that day? Was it was it time to don't break? No, yeah, we were, you know, we packed up the laptop, um, you know, very, I, I really like uh, likened it to uh, when I interviewed at Oklahoma State and um, I think Coach Gundy brought in 10 guys, you know, brought you into a room, grilled you for three hours, didn't see the campus, shut the laptop, left. <laughs> find, find out whether you get the job or not. That's what it was like, Caleb. Pack up your laptop, head to Georgia, get in the house, three hours on the tape, pack up the laptop, and hope you did a good job. Right next door, Pat Murphy, 24-7 Sports. I asked Ryan about just kind of the excitement coming off of the way last season ended. Um, your defense obviously played well to end that season, but they've talked about how they felt like there were stops they could have made in those final two games. How much do you sense the, the opportunity that they feel to go out and kind of reestablish themselves as, as that dominant group once again? Yeah, you, they get it. I mean, you have to prove yourself every week. And yeah, there were, okay, maybe statistically we played okay, but we didn't, we didn't win every game, you know? And, you know, they, they are determined that if we have to win the game three nothing, you know, could have won the bowl game three nothing. I mean that that's on that's on those guys, and I, and 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 they get it. You know, every week you go out there as like you're delivering your thesis. You know, you have to prove yourself on that day, and I think they they understand that challenge, and they they want the fans, the media, the rest of the team to be able to know. When they when they go on the field, that they can be counted on, no matter what the situation, no matter what the score. Uh, Dan Holt, Eleven Warriors. Jim Cody was saying last week that you know you, you guys think you know offenses are going to try to do some tricky stuff with the helmet communication. So how do you guys kind of prepare for the fact that you know offenses may get into formations late? Mm -hmm. You know, I think you uh, when you when you teach now. Um, you have to prepare your players and your, and your on-field play callers and, adju and adjusters that, um, you know, I, I, won't, I won't necessarily be able to make all the right calls for you. So, you know, it starts a long time ago with the, the teaching, you know, like could be that you're going to have to make a lot of on-field adjustments yourself. So you better know the defense. No, yeah, cross training is a cross training is a good word, you know. Um, when you when you get to the game, that's there are times you may have to do that, but not necessarily go into a game that way. But when you're training the safeties, it's good to train them in everything, you know, because somebody goes down, you need to make an adjustment, you know. So I think it's a great thing to do in the in the spring in the fall camp, but you know, as you get to game week, it it becomes more defined. You talked about wanting to disguise things a little bit better. Does, does having guys be kind of multi-positional on the back end help you with that? Problem? Yes, yes. Because, the, the, you know, they understand the coverages. And, uh, you know, if you want to change coverage one way, that they get it because they've done it on the other side. And final question, Jeremy Birmingham, uh, the podcast. Hey, Jim, I'm not an expert on your career trajectory, but just like cursory glance, it shows that year three has been generally the best year statistically for your defenses in the stops you've made. How confident are you that that's going to be the case now, considering that there's not far to go from where you were last year? But what is the biggest difference for you as a, as a play caller this year and just for the overall mindset of the defense overall? You know, you 
you always take the tools that you work with and it's the job of the coaches to get the best out of what you have now you know maybe that year three is because yeah you get the guys who, a couple years in the system and now you're and now you're working with veterans mm -hmm. you know so here at Ohio State we're working with veterans who are also extremely talented so you know you have to expect the best and and uh, chase perfection it's just what we got to do coach thank you very much